We all have good days and bad days in Rocket League. But what actually separates the one from the other? Well, in my mind, it's consistency. On your good days, you're hitting all the shots you should be hitting, but on the bad days, you're missing those same shots. So today, I'm going to be going over the step-by-step -step process you're going to follow to turn your bad days into your good ones. I gotta say it was a good day. And learn how to hit your shots every time or at least more than last time. But without any further wait, let's talk about how to shoot consistently in Rocket League. All right, if we're gonna talk about shooting consistency, where do we actually start? Put differently, what's the first thing that comes up when you get ready to queue some Rocket League? You guessed it, your warm up. And let me know if you relate to this, because I do it too, but I think a lot of players get it wrong before they even step into their online games. Let's face it, how can you expect to hit shots consistently in your games if your warm-up routine is a 15-minute air dribble circuit supersetted with ceiling shots? Seriously guys, step one of learning to hit your shots more consistently is actually a don't do this sort of step. Don't warm up with air dribbles. You see, a Major League Baseball player doesn't prepare for the big game by training a new pitch he's never thrown before. So before you go perfecting your newest mechanic minutes before your games, consider practicing your fundamentals and speed to make sure you're ready to go when the game starts. But okay, you made it this far. Step two is warm up the right way. Now, we're going to talk about training two in a second here, but when I say warm up the right way, what I don't mean is train the right way. Let me be clear, there is a difference between how you should warm up and how you should train. Allow me to explain. A warm up is used to make sure your reflexes and skills you've already trained are ready to go when you're about to hop into a game. Warm ups. Teach hand eye coordination, which is why I now have cat like reflex. <laughs> Training, however, is where you learn new skills and perfect them. Point is, the goal of your warm up is not to train new skills, it's to master the ones you already have. So the two phases of step two are going to be one, get your speed up before games, and two, get your accuracy up before games. At the end of the day, these two pieces are the two major aspects of shooting well. So we have to get both of these parts working simultaneously if you're gonna be hitting your shots in game. Now I'm not going to pretend that my warm up routine is the only routine that could work. But what I'm going to do here is provide you my favorite routine that I've refined after about 2000 hours of playing Rocket League the section of my warm-up routine related specifically to shooting starts by training the accuracy piece. And why the accuracy piece first and not the speed? Because I think it makes the most sense to ramp up the speed as you approach the game, right? If we think of the game as top speed and your training as the slowest speed, then your warm-up should be what bridges that gap. But okay, what is the best warm-up drill to start when it comes to accuracy? Apologies in advance to all you console players, but in my opinion, it's a map called Aim Training by Coco. Now I'm gonna go into detail later on how you can train new shooting techniques, but for warm-up purposes, we're gonna go into normal mode on this trainer and just focus on knocking down as many of these targets as possible. If this mode is too easy, definitely go back and add a randomizer setting to the mix, whether that's with random distance or random target size. Definitely feel free to experiment with this stuff based on your skill level. However, with all of this, there's one catch. During this warm-up and all the other warm-ups going forward, you are to try your best to not look at your car. In other words, your eyes should be glued to the ball and your target only while training. Now, I know that might seem silly, but hear me out. 
when you are in-game, you do not have the luxury of only worrying about your own mechanics in your own little bubble, right? You have to be focused on your opponents and where you want to put the ball in-game. The fact of the matter is, if when you play, you are more worried about how you're going to hit the ball and not where you're going to hit it or why you should hit it there, you've already lost the battle. You see, like it or not, you have to go into your games trusting your mechanics, right? The time to refine your shooting form is not in a three minute overtime, it's in training. We're all at different spots, and how many shots you can hit in a row could vary wildly, even from somebody else at your same rank. So before you move on to the next stage of the warm-up, hop into the survival mode of this aim trainer and simply focus on hitting more shots than you did yesterday. Truthfully, that's the approach that I think is best to follow for phase one of your shooting warm-up. As I mentioned earlier, in phase two of the shooting warm-up, we are going to cover speed. And what better way to train speed than in free play? But rather than just sending you off into free play and leaving you stranded there, I want to give you a few drills to actually be practicing to improve your shooting speed before your games. Drill number one for improving your shooting speed and overall pace of play in general is, as you may have heard, just hit the ball around. Practice zooming around the field and really focus on making yourself uncomfortable when you hit the ball. The only way this drill is useful is if you're forcing yourself to go faster than you have before. If you're just moving around and wandering at a comfortable speed, this drill actually won't do anything to get you ready for games. That's not to mention that this is a great drill for improving your overall understanding of power shots and bounces in Rocket League. And I personally always do this for at least a few minutes before games. Drill number two, on the other hand, is a drill with a little bit more of a specific focus, and it's what I call the chip and shoot drill. Now, there are many different variations of this drill, but in my opinion, the easiest way to get started with this is practice just chipping the ball forward and then come around the ball and put as hard of a shot on net as you can. The key with this drill is to learn what parts of your cars hit the ball hard and when you need to be hitting the ball to really launch it forward. So if you're noticing your power is a little underwhelming compared to the clips here, pay attention to where you're hitting the ball on your car versus where I'm hitting the ball on my car in these clips to try to spot the difference. Yo guys, I just wanted to jump in really quickly here. This is actually me after I've recorded the script for the video, but I was just thinking while we're on the topic of chip and shoot, there's one big mistake I wanted to bring up. One of the most common pitfalls I see players make that absolutely kills their consistency when it comes to shooting is hitting the ball off different parts of your car every time. Generally speaking, guys, what you want to do to hit the ball accurately and with power is aim it off the front of your car or off the front corner. Now, you can side roll into the ball depending on the situation, but what you don't want to do is hit, you know, is hit the ball with the back of your car or the roof of your car because then it's going to go off in ways you can't predict. So really try to approach all your shots the same way by positioning your car to be facing the net and you're going to see so much more success that way. Anyways, guys, back to the video. If this is too easy though, you can scale this drill up by instead rolling the ball towards you using the right D-pad in Bacchus Mod to set up your chip. The drill is the same from here, but the idea is we're just learning how to hit it with different parts of our car and really bring together that accuracy from the first drill and speed from the second drill so we get both of these parts working together. If you're really looking for hard mode of this drill though, you can also try rolling the ball to yourself using Bacchus Mod and then do the chip and shoot drill, but swing around the ball completely and go from left to right as if there were cones in front of you before you actually go for the shot. And I know that might seem like a simple warm-up, but that is exactly the shooting warm-up I use to get ready for my Grand Champ level games. And before you say, but Luke, where are the training packs? Let me clear something up. What we just went over is the warm-up routine you will use before you hop into games. 
In my opinion, training packs are something completely different. Generally speaking, training packs are better for training very specific shots or learning new ones. And at the end of the day, most of them are not all that efficient in getting you warmed up for a game, at least from my own experience. That being said, there are some packs with a variety of useful shots that I wouldn't ban you from practicing if you really like them. But also don't think training packs are a must before games. I think that's something a lot of people get wrong. If after trying this warm-up routine though, you're still looking for training packs specifically to warm up your shooting, I highly, highly recommend you check out a recent video I made titled Best Training Packs for Every Rank in Rocket League, because I drop a ton of great pack codes specifically related to shooting in there. But all that being said, to recap. In steps one and two, we've gone over the approach you're gonna take before you queue into a game. But before I let you run off, there are a few other things you need to know before you get started. So step three, what do you do before you queue into the game? Should you queue casual games, for example? Do I personally queue casual before ranked games? The answer to both of those questions from my experience is typically no. I find that for me personally, my warm-up routine gets my speed ramped up and ready for fast-paced lobbies. And most of the time, the people I find in casual are just memeing around the pitch. And I find it actually slows my speed of play down when I play in that sort of environment before ranked. But I guess the question really is, can you queue casual? And what I'll say to that is, you know what, if you notice it helps you, go for it. But I want to make clear that I'm not a firm believer, like a lot of other people out there, that you should always queue casual before ranked. So do with that information what you will. Finally, on to step four, whether you decide to queue casual or load up like I do straight into ranked to hit more shots, what should your strategy be? In other words, what's the approach you need to take to hit your shots consistently? In my opinion, the single best trick to scoring more is to call your shots. Like a lot of the other tips I've been sharing, credit where credit is due, this is actually a trick I pulled from a pro's book. And I wouldn't recommend most of you to try to copy this one pro, but trust me, Arsenal's strategy of calling your shots before you hit them is actually the most broken strategy to converting more on offense. Why? Well, first off, calling your shots gets you past the biggest barrier to scoring from what I've seen after hundreds of hours of coaching, and that's not having a target. You see, when you call your shot, and I'm not saying you have to say top corner like Arsenal does, but when you just tell yourself where you want to put it, you subconsciously give yourself a target right? I think a lot of people miss shots simply because they have no intention with where they're going to hit it. So from the outset, they were never really set on scoring it. On top of that, if you pick your spot, you're going to approach the shot with that target in mind. So many people miss the shot before they even take it because their approach gives them no other option but to slam it wide. Finally, picking a target gives yourself some room for error, right? If you pick a spot inside the net and you end up missing it, there's still a chance your shot will go on target. But if you don't even pick a spot in the first place, odds are your fails are going to fly grossly off target. Bottom line is, approach your shots with intention and with a goal in mind, and you're gonna convert way more often. But there you have it guys, that concludes my four step process to hitting shots more consistently in game. Now, if you're a serious player interested in hearing more of what I have to say, I want to make sure you know my new six week live coaching program is accepting applications until the end of February. So check out this trailer if you might be interested. Fucked and drank all night. Acted all alright Had no need to fight Tonight, tonight
Anyways, guys, if you're interested in applying for the program, definitely check out the first link in the description. And hey, if you have any questions or thought I missed out on anything, let me know in the comments below. I know I intentionally left out a few things in this video, like how to do aerial shots, because I'm saving those topics for future videos, but if that's something you wanna learn, feel free to go back in the video and study how I approach these shots, because I think there are definitely some things you can pick up in there. But to those of us who approach our training properly, apply our skills in game, and have that focused killer mentality, to us I say, rank is coming. Cheers, guys.